grains. So about eight months ago, nine months ago, it, something like that. I had asked you on the community tab to describe a creature, but not tell me what it is at all. And I got so many entries, but you know, life happened and I totally didn't get to that project. Komennasai! So for this week, for the first time, I'm going to be turning your comments into a sculpture, which I don't know how that's going to go. Pretty sure the sculpture is going to take me at least 20 hours, but know that I did this to myself. Uh... This week's shoutouts go to Drawing Dumpling, Sherry Lewis, and Hannah Neff. This is hat falling all the time. If you want a shout out in my Friday videos, don't forget to hashtag Nerdification Squad in the comment section below within the first 45 minutes of your video's release, or hashtag NerdyCrafter on Instagram or Twitter anytime with any of your creations. All right, so the comment I chose is, <clears throat> it has a lavender body, head and tail, four large green horns on its head, and large blue wings. Its eyes are quite big. The iris is either turquoise or lime green, plus a tiny rhombus-shaped gemstone. I had no idea what the heck a rhombus is. Rhombus. Uh, I grew up pretty French. Maybe it's the same word in French, but we never really used it, so or maybe I just didn't pay attention. So I had to search it, and a rhombus is this shape over here, so I'll post it for you grains over there. Two arms, two legs, pointy blue spikes on the back, long red tongue, and sharp teeth. The tail is long and curvy, green spikes poking from the sides, and another rhombus gemstone on its tail. I also reposted the comment on the community tab as well as on Twitter, and I asked you grains to either sculpt it or draw it. So I'm going to look at all of your sculptures and drawings at the end of the video because I don't want to look at it and get influenced. I want to see if our imaginations are the same. My first instinct would technically be to make a dragon, but I'm going to stay away from that as much as possible. Will I succeed? I don't know. My weapon of choice, as always, will be Sculpey Polymer Clay. Not sponsored, not affiliated, just my favorite kind of clay. And I feel like I need a wooden board, and of course I don't have any. You know what that means. Shopping time with Jackie. So I'm at the dollar store, and here are the wooden boards. I think I'm gonna take the smaller ones. It's a little too big. Let's see. Hmm. I'm in a pickle. I guess I'll take the bigger ones. So I'm gonna grab these three here. Fabricadabra. <coughs> and here we go. So the first thing I want to do is make the armature because it doesn't say in the comment whether or not it is bipedal. It does say arms and legs. So technically for me mentally, if it were going to be on all four legs, it would be it has four legs, right? That's my interpretation. So let's make the armature because I'm going to make it bipedal. Standing on two legs. I got this wire from the hardware store and this whole thing was six bucks, and so far it's lasted me like four years, so it lasts cheaper than craft materials. So at this point, I wanted to make it standing on its two legs, but the more I think about it, the more I know that the tail, let's, let's look at the comment, the tail is long. I feel like I want to make it hover, and the tail itself is what's holding it up. So we're gonna make a sculpture that is kind of floating, and only the tail is keeping it up, which means I need to extend that wire. The idea behind making an armature is so that our clay is not too thick. At some point, if your clay is way too bulky, it might actually crack in the oven because the inside is going to have to struggle with the outside. Look, I, I don't I do not do polymer clay science. I'm just telling you, it's better to have a bulk. I was pretty aware that I was going to at some point run out of my Sculpey clay, so I figured I would use my scrap clay to make the bottom part of the environment. I love me, my pasta machine. If you don't got one, I highly recommend it. 
what we want to do is make sure that this surface is ready to take clay and the best way to do that is to put liquid Sculpey and then add a layer of clay and push it right on top so there's kind of like a suction. I wanted the floor to be uneven so that's that's a preference. Let's use a toothbrush. Make sure that it is not one that you're gonna use for your own teeth, because if your teeth are like this, you need to brush more often. We're going to be using this to texture the bottom. I feel like I would like the bottom part to kind of be like dirt, so let's prep that ahead of time. At this point, what I'm trying to do is block out different shapes. Sometimes it's a little harder to know exactly what you want to do. So my best advice is just start. Don't worry about it. Just start, try your best, block in shapes. And as you go along and as you start smoothing, you're going to see that it's not as hard as you thought in the first place. The first step is usually the hardest. As I'm sculpting, I don't know why, I felt like the bottom part, I really wanted it to be much slimmer than the top part, so it looks like a top-heavy kind of creature. Look at me, I am a bodybuilder. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a terrible Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation. I'm sorry, guys. For the tail, we didn't have that much of a description other than the fact that it's wavy and there's spikes and there's a rumbus. Actually, that makes me realize that, yeah, we did have enough detail for the tail. But in terms of the shape itself, I naturally went with an idea of a lizard, which is dragony, which is essentially very dinosaur-y. And the first one that came to my mind was an ankylosaurus. Am I pronouncing that right? One of the reasons you definitely want to put some liquid Sculpey and a ruined foil on top of your wire is that you want it to stick to each other because I tried multiple times times to get tails to stick onto really thin pieces of wire and it was like no you shall not craft if the bottom of your tail is a kind of messy what was that is a kind of messy go ahead and take a tool and push it so it's kind of like you're tucking the clay under itself so it looks like it has a bit more shape As you'll notice, there's a lot of bumps and crevices and whatnots and fingerprints because of all that smoothing. The best thing to do is take your rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip and smooth it out. You'll see the rubbing alcohol kind of melts the clay, so it evens it out as much as possible. For the rumbus, there are a few different ways you can do it. It's kind of like a diamond at the end of the day. You can either shape it with your hands or put it in the freezer, the clay I mean, and then use a cutter to cut the exact shape. Since this is a living creature, I decided to go with my hands just to keep things a little more organic. With the tail looking like this, it's starting to look kind of like a stinger, which automatically brings my mind to a completely different creative method. Because initially I was thinking kind of dragon-ish type wings or bat wings, but I think, I think this sculpture is talking to me. Jackie, hey, I think I want to go into the direction of perhaps bug wings. Yes, bug wings. Sculpture has spoken. It is what it is. Hey Grains, Jackie, Jackie from the from future, future here. here. And I realize that some of you are probably going to ask, how can we get our comment to become a sculpture? Pretty simple. All you have to do is comment in the comment section below with a description of a creature. Remember, don't tell me what it is. So instead of saying it has feathers like a peacock, just go ahead and describe it. Its tail feathers fan out and it has multiple colors with dots on it on the tips. Get creative. So make sure you use the comment section below for that. One of the challenges of working from a description rather than an art to sculpture is that you have to constantly go back and re-remind yourself what was in that description. And along the way, your mind is most likely going to go to cliches, but it's really up to you to want to try and break those cliches. And if the sculpture looks like one thing and then you're going into a different direction, just allow it to happen. That is the whole fun part about sculpting is that, you know, it's not like you put a piece of sculpture down and you can't remove it. You can definitely remove it. It's so forgiving. That's why I love polymer clay. All right, I am very aware that the description says large blue wings, but a big part of me really wants to make wings that look like leaves. So I'm going to go with a dark bluish green or greenish blue. I don't know if it's cheating. I don't think it's cheating. If you think it's cheating, why don't you come here and fight me? I'm just joking. I don't want to, I don't want to fight. So I decided to go ahead and make wings that look like leaves because I wanted to give this a kind of pixie bug feel to it. I don't know. It's, it's a fantasy creature guys it doesn't exist it's in my head what's in my head feels right i made two of these leaves and i baked them for about 20 minutes 
and of course had to put eye pins in there because you know we need to attach it to the body and I made sure as I baked it that it is slightly bent at the tips just so that it looks a lot less stiff just to give you a heads up the head yeah that's not gonna stay we're gonna we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna try and fit a different kind of head that could work with this but before we move on to the head which is going to be quite detailed I want to start doing the limbs now I don't want them to be too detailed because I don't want them to remove the focus from all the other bits and since this is a bug type fairy pixie creature yes that is quite the complicated combo I'm going to keep them as simple as possible for legs it's pretty simple you just kind of got to make a little ball and then shape it I am using a wire that is super flexible I believe this is the sculpey wire which I would ever which why which I <laughs> oh my god I can't talk I can't talk which I wouldn't recommend for using for armature probably for limbs not for wings and not for things that need to stand I would highly recommend the heavier wire that I used. I know it looks like a chicken, but give it, give it a chance. Give it a chance. Everyone deserves to have an equal and fair chance, especially once we put the leaf wings on it starts to take on its own personality how exciting is that i don't maybe i'm getting excited i hope you're getting excited with me are you make sure you vote i want to know how excited you are this creature is said it has large blue wings and its eyes are quite big the iris is either turquoise or lime green whichever is okay you're being a little too nice what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do both colors within the same eye so kind of like a sheen to it the method I'm using was by Mandarin Ducky, so it's not a technique that I found, but I'm using it a lot because it is a great technique. I recommend that you put the eyes on a piece of polymer clay, that way it doesn't wobble around while you're using it. I'm using a half dome glass that I bought off of eBay, and I think I bought like a hundred of them for five bucks. Time to see if I need to restart these eyes because they're derpy or just plain ugly. And the first one. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty. Oh wait, nail polish dripped on the side. Oh yeah, from before. And the lime one. So pretty. I really like these. I know they're very lizardy, but at the same time, it is a fey creature, so it could have a bit of a wild look. All right, now for the backups. Oh, that is really pretty. So we have a bit of the turquoise and the lime green. If I'm going for a bit of a cuter look, this is definitely the eyes I would use. So I guess I would only find out once I do the face and see which one speaks to me again. Yep, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. We are the next day, 7 a.m. Whoever says crafts takes five minutes is full of bullshit. I think I know what's the problem with it looking like a chicken is that the chest is a little too pointy. So I'm gonna smooth that out right there. All right, I think. I think that's as good as it gets. Less chickeny right now. The limbs don't help, but let's not talk about that. Trust me, the head will change everything. So here's the only hints we have about the head. There are four large green horns on its head. And the other thing, the eyes are quite big. But then again, all these measurements are quite relative. It depends on how big the head is and how big the eyes are. And I mean, usually for a creature, it could be much smaller. Smaller. There's also a gemstone rhombus on its head. It has sharp teeth and a long tongue. That's quite a bit of things to cram in there. For the large teeth, a huge part of me wants to make an underbite. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt an underbite and then make the fangs stick out because large teeth, again, all these things are relative. If it said the teeth goes as long down to its neck, that's different. But since we don't have measurements, I'm going to make it relative to the creature itself. close to the final stretch I think the last thing that's left on that list is to make sure that there are spikes on the back and on the tail I'm just going to make the indent for where the wings would go and I'm gonna glue them later on just so that we don't you know ruin it for the baking gods we need to make sure that we are in their favor in absolute love but by the way i know i look like poo i just woke up and i'm working on this i probably should have washed my face but no nope. crafting is priority 
So it's time to put our hands together and pray to the baking gods. Dear baking gods of Evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and fallen limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff! The baking gods have blessed us. Once it's baked and fully cooled down, the only thing left to do is to spray paint it, let it dry, and now time to put the colors on. Guys, I, I forgot to put the tongue. Bravo, Jackie, just bravo. So I'm gonna attempt to add the tongue. I, I really, I was like, I'm gonna do it, and then I didn't do it. So now, I need to do it. So for the tongue, what I decided to do is take a piece of the Sculpey wire, which is very flexible, hammered down one end so that it doesn't look like it's too round near the mouth, and I took my scissors and cut the tip to make it seem like a forked tongue. by far probably one of my favorite pieces that I've done in the longest time. I really like the fact that I challenged myself, not only that, but also with the painting job because I do hear you grains. Some of you are like, but Jackie, you're not painting right. I know. I'm still learning. But at least I did really try earnestly to do dry brushing. I had so much fun with it. I know I have a lot to learn, but that's what it is, right? You, you live, you learn. What do you grains think? Do you think I got the description spot on or uh, so so. I personally think I did so so just because for one one I wait wait before before you say I did great There's something I did wrong, which are the wings in my defense I put a lot of blue. I know the description says blue wings and I put just a little bit of green I put a lot of blue. So it's like a, a greenish blue, right? Do I pass? You forgive me? With that said, I want to look at all the submissions, or at least I hope I've included all the submissions. There were well over 250 of them. So I want us to take a look at all the drawings we did and I categorize them into a couple of different categories. So I want to start off by saying thank you so much for those of you who participated. I know I was last second and I posted this only maybe two or three days before the video came out, but the fact that so many of you participated makes me so happy to see your creations. Some of you did digital art, some of you did traditional art, other of you did crafts, which was so cool. I mean, I really didn't think anyone would ever do a kind of amigurumi plushie. That, that really caught me off guard. Even though the majority of them are dragons, no two look alike. There are so many different kinds of styles and some of them were creepy and some of them were cute and some of them were derpy and some of them made me laugh and other ones made me go like, wow. And then there were some of them that were just completely different creatures like sloths. How cool is that? I would have never thought to do a sloth type creature. Mind you though, I, I did do a pixie kind of bug creature. And there were also those of you who did humanoid type monsters. Again, some of them were pretty cute and others were so scary. And you know, you know how I feel about scary things. I love it. I love scary monsters. And trust me, I tried to find every single one. If yours isn't in there, I hope that next time I'll be able to catch you. I really had to sit there and download over 250 pictures. At least I believe it was 250 pictures. At least that's what Instagram told me and Twitter. And there were some of you who started and didn't get a chance to finish, so I did include you guys at the end.
Thank you so much for watching My Little Brains. If you want to watch a crafting video, make sure you check it up here. And if you want some salt, because creating is just not enough sodium for you, check it, check it out down there. Wow, English. It's come back number one again. Until then, I will see you in the next video.